my name's Murray Christensen, and uh, sometimes known as Pie Man or Pie Man 70, uh, on occasion even known as Purry. And I'm going to be taking you on a playthrough of at least some of Mist. Um, I'm not planning to do the whole thing in one go, I'm going to split it into bits. Um, but first, we're going to sit through the intro. So, enjoy! The book would not be destroyed as I had planned. I continued falling into that starry expanse of which I had only a fleeting glimpse. I've tried to speculate where it might have landed, but I must admit that such conjecture is futile. Still, the questions about whose hands might one day hold my misbook are unsettling to me. I know my apprehensions might never be allayed, and so I close. Realizing that perhaps the ending has not yet been written. So, uh, that was the intro. Uh, now, I find that fantastic person. I really enjoy that as a sort of mysterious intro that gives you a, a taster of the game to come. Um, now, a few things starting. First thing, most you'll be asking, why Mist? Uh, Mist divides uh, people quite a lot. There's a, a small community of people who really, really love Mist. I mean, absolutely adore it. Um, get involved, cosplay, fan conventions, tattoos, the lot, and, well, range from the very extreme to people like me who just really love the series. Um, and there's people who absolutely hate it, who revile it, uh, despise it. There are people in between as well. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of foster um, understanding. So, in the uh, cooperation, I just... I'm not trying to change anyone's mind about Mist. What I want people to do is perhaps hopefully see where one another are coming from. Maybe understand each other a bit better. Bring a little harmony into the world. It's nice. So the idea is I'm going to play through it as a fan. Um, I'm going to sort of... Obviously this means I know where most of the things are, so I am going to wander around and... Uh, you know, I'll try to show as much of the game as possible and not take any shortcuts, but it will still be someone who clearly knows what they're doing. I won't be fosking about poking things. Likewise, I am also going to talk about why I like Mist, what I got into, particularly through some of the repetitive sections, of which there are many, and I will be talking about some of my criticisms of the game, because while I do love the game, I'm not completely ignorant to its faults. So with that, we'll get started. Now, this is one of the things I loved about the game when I first played it way back in the 90s, was the lack of a HUD. Um, it is really like you're there. It's something, again, we take for granted somewhat these days, but uh, back when this was first produced, you usually would have something with some controls or maybe a window around it, so this was quite unique. Like I say, all you have is your pointer with your finger, and you'll notice that the little thumb closes when it can activate something, so we'll tap that. And this is our first glimpse of Mist Island, and again, one of the things I think that I can tell if you'll like Mr. or not is if that intro and then this first sort of fly up to the island pique your interest, if they don't then the game's probably not for you. And you know what? That's fine. Not every game is for everyone. People like different things. That's the world. Not everything has to be for you. Similarly, we all don't have to like the same things. It would be a very dull world if we did. So, here we are. And we have, apparently, a view of a dock. Again, nothing we can really do, we can't leaf through the book, but again, your little thumb closes, so we shall do here, and the world fades to black. Um, I did like this, this was an addition for the real missed edition of having the little falling man as your weight icon. So we'll put it into free roam for the moment. Uh, I wish they didn't do that, that's one of my gripes with real miss is they do feel the requirement to pull that up, which I think takes you out. The whole point of this game, what really makes it good is the immersion. Now, I am playing the Real Mist Masterpiece Edition, eagle-eyed uh, viewers will have spotted that. The reasons are twofold. The main one is it was installed on my computer, and so I, I can access it and I know it works. I've actually played through this already. Uh, the other reason for it was uh, to at least make it look pretty. I think... Um, with some people trying to understand someone who thought something was amazing in the day when it still looks like what was actually a glorified interactive slideshow, um, I think might be a bit of a stretch for some. Might not be. I might be selling you all short. But either way, the main reason was it's installed on my machine and it works. So this was your first view of Mist Island, and one of the things that was really 
It wasn't unique, but it was one of the first times I'd actually encountered it playing it on, believe it or not, up to an Apple Mac in my school, was the use of ambient sound, the idea that you got the wind and the, the water lapping up against this, this sunken ship here at this jetty. And that just started involving me, and I think that's one of the big advantages of Mist, particularly of its time. And again, this is one of those things that I think is of its time. I think it would be hard to get someone into it now. Is that at the time, this level of immersion was rare, um, or at least not entirely common. So, like you see, in this version, in the original one, all I would have done is clicked ahead and I would have faded because it did work like a slideshow. So here we have a switch. This particular unit has some significance for later in the game. Um, I'm not going to mention that now. Suffice to say, there are people who say, oh, you can finish Mist in a couple of minutes, and it's true, you technically can. But you do need to have a certain bit of information that's only revealed to you near the end of the game. So if you have acquired that information without playing through the game, that means you were looking up things on the internet or cheating. So yes, you can finish it quickly if you cheat. Um, the real Miss Masterpiece Edition I do actually really like, just because as a fan of the game it's nice to be able to see angles and bits of Mist Island you previously couldn't. So what we have here is we've got a note, so I shall read it out. Catherine. I've left for you a message of utmost importance in our forechamber beside the dock. Enter the number of marker switches on the island into the imager to retrieve your message. Yours, Atris. Could be Atris. I was never quite sure of the pronunciation. And this is the sort of first peak of mystery, as you have this abandoned note uh, between two people saying that there's something important. Atris clearly can't express things shortly. You know, it's an important message. Doesn't say I've left you a message in the chamber. Here's the combination. Also, it's clear that either him or Catherine are very bad at remembering passwords, since he has to give her a clue as to what he set the password to. They don't have a, a universal password set for just this occasion. So, what I'll do is I'll walk back down to the dock to see the four chamber. And there it is, a little hatch. And this was, again, one of the things. It was the mix of styles. So there you've got some Greek-style things. You've got some mysterious gears there. You've clearly got an old sailing ship. And then down here we've got a giant steel door. Um, in the old game, that was just a wipe between one side to another. It still worked quite well. You walk down this, suddenly a lit, almost concrete, or at least dug out, corridor. Um, which again, is quite mysterious. And in here is a little pool. Or is it? So, this is some of the first incidental music I actually encountered in the game, aside from the intro. And apparently, originally, they weren't going to include any. But it was things like this where they realised it did actually help the immersion, and I'm glad they did. So here it looks like a pool, but there is something under that water. It's very odd. And there's a little note on the wall, so we'll go and look at that. And that's settings for the dimensional imager. So, turbulent pool is 67. So, this, ah, so if we set this to 40, and then press this button. If I turn around now, our pool has gone. But, I can press that button, and I get a 3D map of what looks like this island, possibly. Definitely an island. Again, I can choose to look at that closely. Or indeed, wander off. So the other thing was a marker switch diagram. And that's good, because he asked us to count the number of marker switches. So, to find out what a marker switch is... Too far, too excited in my clicking. Press that, and we come round again, the image is gone. Click the button. Now that is a slight difference. Originally it was just literally a kind of 3D polygon model of the marker switch that came up and rotated. They have actually given a much more holographic projector look in this uh, reissue, which is quite good. But as you can see, it's like that switch that we saw at the docks. So, we've got to count the number of marker switches. I'll explain why they're called marker switches in a minute. So, there we have one. And if we go up this flight of stairs, this was one of the criticisms of Mist was there's a lot of moving back and forth. Uh, quite a few people accused it of padding. It's hard to disagree at times. They did, however, put in a zip mode which allowed you to just jump from scene to scene if you had got bored of looking at the island. Um, so there's two second marker switch. Now I'm going to throw this one, and that's because. I'm going to demonstrate why they're called marker switches. So as we go down, we've got this round building here. 
Again, more grass. I do like the way they have animated grass. Again, this is common garden stuff for even more. Bear in mind, this game, even the reissue, is pretty old. So there's three. One at this round building here. In fact, I'm going to take a quick look in this building, because this is again one of the other things. So in here, it could be the dentists. There's definitely a chair that you can sit in. It's got this digital control panel. Again, the mishmash of technologies was one of the things that intrigued me. And what this room actually is, is not just a, not a dentist at all, it's a miniature planetarium. And I love a planetarium. Not that, you know, you've sold a game to me if you put a planetarium in, but let's say you're in good stead if you do. We can indeed move the dates. So look at different parts of the night sky at different times. Needless to say, this will be part of a puzzle later. So, until then, switch the lights back on, and we'll go. So we were at three marker switches. Ha 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 ha. And here, this grand Greek-style building, is the library. It looks like there's been quite a lot of damage to it. There are some books left here with names like The Channel Wood Age of Mist, The Stone Ship Age, that might be the something else, Selenetic Age of Mist, so they do have some titles. Similarly, there are these books. We will look at those later. We'll get the message first. Now, as you can see, I flicked that switch there, and this thing has now appeared on the map. So what the marker switches do is make features appear on that map. As you can see, we're still at three switches, keeping that number in my head. Again, when you originally played this, you actually had to write things down, write down clues. Um, and, to be honest, if I was more professional, I'd have played through it once and written down all my clues just to be sure. I may actually have some copies. So there you go, there's the library now. The uh, library, the observatory, or planetarium now. Now down here we've got a spaceship. So, clearly this person's inventor. And it was actually based, the steampunkish styles were because one of the inspirations were Jules Verne's Mysterious Island. Um, I do know a lot of people got frustrated here that they flicked that switch and that door didn't open. Needless to say, there's something else you have to do to open that door. So, put that on, so that's us now at four switches. And then we'll come down here. In the original game, this is one of the parts that I really loved, because you actually got a little animation of butterflies flying up. Um, this is one of the scenes where I said you could virtually smell the pine as you're coming up. There's our fifth marker switch. Hope I've not lost count. Hope some of you aren't sitting there going, No, you're wrong! We've got this little rather understated building. But it looks almost modern, or at least World War Two era. Seven marker switches. Eight. And finally, out there, one we can't get to at the moment, at this clock tower, apparently on a little island out to sea, is the ninth. So, that's nine marker switches total. So let's just recount. One, two, three, four. There's one at the rocket, which is five. Six. Uh, you see, that's not adding up now, so... 1, 2, 3... 4 at the rocket, 5... 6, 7, 8. So 8 marker switches. I'd miscounted somewhere. That's why you always double check your counting, or indeed write things down. Either way, it's not too bad, because it is a simple number you're putting in. If it doesn't work the first time, you'll do it the second. So, let's see what Atrus had to say to Catherine. Let's snoop in his messages, since he wasn't secure enough with his passwords. Or at least didn't hide his notes well enough. So, back here. He said eight markers, which I think. I've never been sure if those beeps have meaning. I think they do. I think I've just not been observant enough to spot it. So. Catherine, my love. I have to leave quickly. Something terrible has happened. It's hard for me to believe. Most of my books have been destroyed. Catherine is one of our sons. I suspect Agatha, but I shouldn't leave to conclusions. I'll find him and Cirrus as well. Oh, I should have known better than to have left my library unchecked for so long. Well, I've removed the remaining undamaged books from the library and placed them in their places of protection. You shouldn't have to use the books until I return, but if you've forgotten the access keys, remember the tower rotation. Oh, and don't worry, Catherine. Everything will be fine. I'll see you shortly. Oh, and erase this message after you viewed it, just to be safe. Well, we can guess from that that Catherine did not get the message. Since uh, it's not been erased. So again, 
bad things have happened. One of his sons, actress's sons, has apparently destroyed the books. You might be asking, well, that's a bummer. I mean, I'd be annoyed if someone set fire to my books, but uh, books are books. The thing is, in the world of mist, and I'm going to drop this on you now, as we've seen, we entered this age, this uh, area, through a book. And that's the idea in mist, is you can, trans you can actually transport yourself to other worlds through books. Um, possibly a metaphor. So we'll go back to the library, because as we can see, there are books here. But if we take, for example, the Channelwood Age, it's just a normal book. Whereas the one we went in through had windows, so there are obviously special books. And as you can see, quite a lot of these are the same picture of a destroyed, burnt book. Um, that was one of the more frustrating things first time playing through, is finding things in the library. But wait, there are two other books in here, so let's first have a look at this one. So, there's a blue page. And if we click that, we get a noise. Blue pages. <laughs> I must have the blue page. Come to me. Well, he seems nice. So we have a crazy guy in the book. Um, this may be one of the sons. He appears trapped and he wants you to pick up blue pages. Now bear in mind that we think one of these sons may have destroyed the library, done whatever it is to Catherine that she can't make at home, and potentially done something to Atris. So here's a red page. I'll try the red book. Why? Murray. So that's one of the sons. Guess the other guy was Akron. He seems nicer. He's asking for a rescue. So it is at this point that the game expects you to pick one brother who you will try to get pages for, and this is one of the game's biggest flaws, believe it or not, is that uh, you are going to travel around finding pages for these books, and sadly, most of us are completists, or at least we don't know the whole story, so we will have to go and get two pages. Two pages should not be a heavy carry, carry but apparently for your character in this game, it is, so it does involve a lot of repetition. One of the things about the library here that always gets me about this is, for ages I didn't realise that was a chandelier. The image you got um, in the original game was from directly below it, and so it looked almost like a map of the world with some sort of star in the middle of it. Now the last thing we've got here are two pictures. One is of the view out there, lovely it is too, and the other is apparently of a secret passage, although not that secret because there's a picture of it on your wall. This is one of the big criticisms of Mist, is that it has a lot of puzzles, and as you can see, the bookshelf has opened up and opened up a path for us to go down. One of the big criticisms of Mist is that the puzzles are basically over-glorified combination locks. It's one I can't really, you know, um, ignore because it is. They aren't solving a, you know, trying to build a bridge or get power to something. It is merely a means to an end to get a combination lock, and nothing's done quite so much as the tower puzzle. So, he did say something about the tower, and there is indeed a tower. There's uh, two signs in it. One is a picture of a book. So if we go up this ladder, but we can't see anything. The other one, if we go down the ladder, is a key. Again, I assure you there's nothing up there. 
So, this is where we get the combination. So what I'm going to do is close this gate and drop down. Now, like I've said before, I know where I'm going in this game, so it is a bit of a, a swizz because you're not kind of discovering things and doing as much trial and error as a new player would do. So, they did say tower rotation, so I'll go through this lovely wood panel passageway. And again, it's these wee twists. You've had Greek architecture and that sort of thing, and then you've got these little caged lights that, I say, look more modern. And you've got this kind of holographic map. And if you do that, oh, that made a noise. So we can rotate the tower. And it seems to freeze on certain things that we've marked. The gears. So let's burl it around to that. So it will rotate. We can hear it. So we've rotated the tower, so let's go back up and see what we can see. Now what I'm planning to do is finish it off once we get this first combination. Because what I will do, should I find the time and inkling to do this again, indeed if it's successful, if people like it, then oh, we're rotating now. What I might do is do a sort of an age, uh, a sort of um, an age of time, but I will read book, which is a description of things from that age at each time. So, through here we should, sadly there's a bug in the game, we should actually be able to see that big pine tree that's kind of covered in its little walled garden. And down here, we have a combination. There should be a combination, there you go. Seven, two, four. So I'd normally photograph that or write it down or just try to remember it. In truth, you may well be nipping back up here again before we go. So what I'll do is I will finish it off there. And like I say, this is basically an intro to it. It's my first go at doing these sort of uh, Let's Play videos. So uh, we'll see how it pans out. So um, thank you if you've sat through this all. Well done and, and thank you. Um, do please leave comments, um, like I say it's my first go at this, so give me advice even if it is stop, stop, never do it again. Um, if you're just coming on to say mist sucks, that's fair, it's an opinion. Um, I don't know if there's much conversation to be had for it, but fair enough. Um, and uh, hopefully I will be back in an indeterminate number of weeks at the moment. I'm hopefully going to try and do this once a month, but we'll see how I get on. But hopefully I will be back in a bit to do the next part of mist. So until then, bye for now.